Bach's invention number eight in F major. We have this nice jumpy subject. And this is another canon. So when the left hand enters, it's with the exact same subject, just imitating the right hand one bar later. And it's cleverly done because every bar, there is a change of texture. So first it's eighth notes in the right hand. And then it's 16th notes going down. It's kind of filling out the arpeggio down. Uh, so then in the second bar, the left hand has eighth notes. And in the third bar, the right hand gets eighth notes again. So together. That is until this fifth bar. Now we get 16th notes in both hands, so here we get a really nice sequence, uh, kind of a new texture, this uh, repeating pattern of... Kind of the groovy Bach gets in here. Uh, and it's really cool, the canon, when it's a third down, it works for, you know, two thirds in a row. So it starts on A, and then right hand goes down to F, and left hand goes on A, and then it's a third down, and then the left hand continues, but then the right hand moves on. So... And here it's a really cool kind of sneaky mechanism. So here the canon continues, but it's slightly adjusted in the left hand. So when the right hand gets this starting on a B natural, the right hand plays... It's a proper G chord, G seventh chord. But when the left hand gets this, starting on a B natural, the left hand goes directly to C major instead of the G major. But from that point on, it's the, exactly the same subject, just uh, one note lower. So starting on an F here, on these 16th notes. When the right hand has on G. And the reason for this is we want to close this segment with a cadence in C major or uh, the way Bach solves this is by doing this adjustment here. Because the following bars, it's actually the same uh, canon subject, just slightly altered. And the last bar, it's some kind of new notes, not directly connected to the subject, but it's a cadence bar, so we expect that. And here starts the second part of the piece. So this is a clear cadence in C major, it's a dominant to F major, perfectly normal. But from here on we're going to be like one long line just driving through to the end. And it seems like it's a start of a new exposition in C major and of course the roles are reversed. The left hand starts and the right hand comes in one bar later. Until here, this is somewhere already after three bars, it's a new path here with this diminished chord. And kind of new texture in the right hand as well. With this really cool uh, Bach pattern as well, repeating one note and moving the other. We get that a lot in this section. And after this bar, now uh, we get the new start of the subject in G minor. And the left hand starts already with uh, the scale down. And here again this diminished chord. And this section, it really has a feeling of a development section in the piece, even just a short piece. Because we had one start in C major, now we have one, a new start in G minor of the subject. And this is a typical development feeling, like you're trying different keys and see what works. And then after this G minor, he finds something that really works. So after this, this diminished chord here, this is uh, what we had after the C major, just reversed hands. Uh, the left hand plays this. Now he continues with this pattern 
and he reaches the D minor here. And these bars are comes now, it's so great to play because it feels a totally natural progression, every chord and every bar, and it feels like it's just falling into place. And when it feels like that, uh, this is how it goes. <laughs> feels like that it's probably the circle of fifth progression uh, and it is here it's slightly disguised though it's it's uneven so it's only on the first and second beat it changes and of course it's a sequence so when the right time gets it's the same every bar just one note lower in a sequence and so uh, you can discern what the harmony is it changes on the first and the second beat so it's uh, the second beat is longer it's the second and third beat of one harmony and then it's a sh shorter harmony on the first beat and also the left hand goes through the the co uh, chord notes um, but you can discern what the harmony is uh, after the d minor here you kind of get the d minor c7 f major B diminished, E minor, E minor, A7, back to D minor. So this is the circle of fifth progression. And with the chord, this is within D minor, of course. Now we get back to D minor, and now we just go for a second round in the carousel of the circle of fifth. But it's reversed the positions, uh, but and here we get D minor, G minor, C, F major, and then F7 going. So before we went F to B diminished um, here. Now we go F7 to B flat major. So it's kind of modulating. Uh, this is approaching the end and we when we get to the B flat major we recognize this so uh... This is the same that we had in the beginning. It's the second part of the subject So it's kind of a sneak away. He this is kind of a recapitulation of the subject But it starts in the middle of it. So it's kind of sneaks up on you, but from here on it's a perfect repetition but in another key. So in the first uh, exposition, this part starts in F major up here. And then it ends in C major. Now we start in B flat major and we end in F major. It's just one fifth transposed. So that's a very clear ending to the piece here. play through the piece in full and you will see these uh, structural points on the score as well. Thanks for watching Sonata Secrets. The Patreon shoutout in this episode goes to Jay Newman and Bean Nagoyan.